Hello and welcome back to the Linux Panic YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install RetroArch on an Arch-based operating system. But first, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. So you're probably wondering, Nick, what is RetroArch? Well, as we can see here on the RetroArch website, it is a front end for emulators, game engines, and media players. It allows you to run video games from all the way back to the Sin to the uh, Sinclair, right the way up to the PS3 era. Now, in this case, I'm going to be showing you a Triton GTA for GTA Chinatown Wars on the PPSSPP emulator, a very popular emulator, and we're going to do that from start to finish. So here we are inside my install of uh, Manjaro. We just close all of these. I will be doing. I am going to be doing a fresh install of a RetroArch. So first off, um, you go. You can go to Pamac to download it. So in this case, we will do. We'll go RetroArch. I I recommend you download it through Pamac because you need to get the additional assets as well. So what we're going to do first is we're going to get RetroArch and all the extra assets. Tell it to apply and then it should download them all. Now, this is going to take longer to synchronize the package databases than it will to do anything else. So we're going to choose additional. So we're going to go yes, yes and yes. For everything It's going to install seven packages. I'm going to click apply for that. It's going to go through and check see if there's any conflicts. And we should be done. RetroArch is not even 100 megabytes to install. It's what it does in the background is what is important. As we can see, RetroArch is installed. So first off, we're going to type RetroArch. Just have a look. As we can see here, we have icons for everything. Now, this, this wouldn't happen... Um, if you didn't or download the assets with it, if you didn't download the assets with it, you'd have to come to online update and then download the assets. But in this case, we don't need to. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my PS4 controller and plug it in. I'm going to tell the virtual machine, hey, look, connect this controller through to the virtual machine. And give it a second. Sony Interactive Entertainment Wireless Controller. So I am now using my controller. But I'm going to use my mouse for this one. So first thing we're going to do is go to the core downloader. Scroll all the way down until we find Sony. And then we're going to download the PPSSPP uh, emulator. It's going to back up. So I did have some troubleshooting issues in the previous attempt of recording this. So that's why uh, things are already here. That's perfectly fine. We will be doing a clean install. So we select the code we wanted to download. So in this case, it was on PPS SPP. And I have two games loaded. I have China Town Wars Europe and USA, both of which I own. So just keep an eye on that. To import a game into RetroArch, you need to select import content. And you can either scan a file or directory. So what I'm going to do is just going to get it to scan files in the documents. Get it to scan this and it should pop up here once you've imported correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the core association so it knows which one it's going to. And then we're going to hit run. And it's easy as that. This is GTA 5 Chinatown. It's not GTA 5. G Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars. Now, we need to change a couple settings around so we can actually hear. So first off, we're going to come down to the settings. I'm going to set this to full screen mode starter because I'd much prefer full screen mode. Now we're going to go to audio output. Output is set to pulse. Oh, I did not mean to do that. We're going to set it as on and we'll actually change it to, we'll change it to something else, change it also because I couldn't hear the audio. Now this may be different when you're trying it, but because I'm running it through a virtual machine, there may be a audio issue due to just sending it through to the virtual machine. So that's probably why I w wasn't able to hear it beforehand. So that's okay. 
Now, if we wanted to change some settings for the virtual machine, we'd come to the core, manage core, PPSSPP, and we can actually have a look at the core settings. It says everything that is needed is present, requires the asset file, lang, and flash folder inside that, which is already here. We're going to lock installed cores so I can't fuck around and break it, because I don't want to fuck around and find out. Then it's more hassle than it's worth. And we are going to just launch. As simple as that. Now, this wouldn't be this easy on the PPSS PP installer by itself. This would take significantly longer. Uh, yes, I wish to accept. Yes. Now, we won't be able to hear any sound because I'm in an emulator, but this is running at full. This is running at 1920 resolution and it's working as intended, which is good. Now there are plenty of settings you can change when you're in game. So you can actually see what you want to do. So it's just, hey, look, you can resume. You can start, stop, take screenshots, various save slots, states. You can actually change, you can actually unload save states. So if you wanted to try something out, but you didn't want to uh, break a save or anything like that, you don't need to. You just say, oh, okay. Make a quick save state and go from there. So I want over on screen display. And I would like to output a FPS, but I can't remember where it is. So in this case, we'll just carry on. Uh, you can actually increase the speed with L on a keyboard. That's what I'm doing here because I don't want to have to go through the initial dialogue. Man, yeah, it's just easy, as simple as that. We have gone from start to finish. It took less than 10 minutes. So it is as easy as this. So, and this is where we're going to call it for this one. Now to install anything more. Oops, caught my, uh, caught my wrist rest. To install any more games, we will first off need to close content and come over to main menu and select a core. So in this case, if I wanted to, oh, I don't know, play the Simpsons hit and run on the Nintendo GameCube, we'd need to scroll down to Nintendo and find the dolphin emulator. I have found that using the dolphin emulator for GameCube, work spectacularly because of how the dolphin emulator is actually set up it is possible to play wii games on well through the emulator which i found hilarious so that's downloaded we can come to the uh cores and core settings again so we need to go core manage cores dolphin it's always useful to check the cores just have it have a see if it's saying something in this case it's missing the required sys folder and we can just go to here and we're sorted it just it tells you what to do it tells you how to fix any issues which in emulators is pretty damn good not many emulators will actually tell you what's broken and how to fix it anyway this is the end of the video i'd like to thank you very much for watching uh, I'd like to remind you that you can get early access to my videos over at Patreon, or you can support me over at GitHub where you can sponsor me for various projects such as my wine install scripts. Anyway, to those of whom you love watching, I have been Nick, you have been amazing, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Goodbye.